what's going on family welcome back to the channel back with another futures video if you guys remember from the last video we talked about my funded futures going over all the rules in faq today we're actually going to be diving into apex rules so you guys can get a complete understanding of what you need to know before purchasing one of these challenges they are very different when it varies company to company the same rules that apply for my funded futures do not apply or may even be different when trading under apex so we're gonna dive straight into it. Of course, it, as you guys know with TGFX, we will never put out any videos covering any company that we aren't actually testing out and trying out for ourselves. So as you guys can see, I am logged in here. I bought two of the 50K accounts. So this specific video, we're gonna be covering the rules and FAQ. But in later videos, I will go into more detail about passing the accounts, using the platforms, how do I like the payout structure, all of those things we will definitely be able to dive into in the future, same way that we have so far with my funded futures and getting funded, taking you guys through all the setups and trades and all those good things. But today's video is gonna be specifically on the rules and FAQ because that's one of the main things we need to focus on first before we spend our money to buy into the challenges that we don't know specifically about the rules and then what happens when we get funded and how those rules update and change. It's very important that we know that before spending our money because I know like myself, a lot of us come from trading Forex and it's gonna be different already from trading Forex but there's also difference trading with different futures firms. So let's dive right into the FAQ here. Now, the first thing that I really want you guys to understand when trading an Apex account or trading with this firm is how the trailing threshold actually works. So let's go ahead and read this. They start off by saying here that you start with your initial balance allowable contracts for the plan. You can trade up to the maximum contracts. Micros can also be traded to the max contract size for the plan. The max loss or drawdown for each plan. For an example, on a 50K plan, it starts 2,500 below 50K. So at $47,500, there is no daily max drawdown limit. So no max drawdown limit for the day, but you do have that trailing drawdown. This is where it actually differs. So Apex actually offers full accounts and static accounts. Basically with a full account, you are going to have the trailing drawdown that is going to continue to trail as you go into profit. For the static accounts, the drawdown will remain unchanged as it is already static. So 100K static account, the drawdown will remain at 99,375. The thing I noticed specifically with the static accounts, they do not allow you pretty much any drawdown, just around $625 on 100K accounts. So ideally with the one that I actually chose was actually a full account that's gonna have the trailing drawdown applied here. Now I also did purchase two 50K full size accounts because I also wanted to be able to take advantage of a trade copier, which I will show you all again in later videos when we go into Trade Evade and the group trader and how all that Welcome works. Welcome to TGFX Trade Lab, the future of trading education, now available on all devices. Get access to futures, forex, and crypto courses and education, as well as various trading tools and widgets to make your life easier as a trader. Access our daily live streams directly in the app and trade alongside us. Receive push notifications so that you never miss another trade setup. Download now for free and level up your trade. So back to the account size, the 50K plan allows you up to 10 minis and 100 micros and your trailing threshold is 2,500. Notice the rising trailing drawdown in your R Trader dashboard under auto liquidate threshold. It is important to monitor this value. If your account drops below the drawdown threshold, you will fail the evaluation. So for example, if your risk is allowed is 2,500, it will trail the highest profit by 2,500. So what this means guys is as you go into profit, it does not matter if you close out that position or not, your trailing drawdown immediately starts. Now we talked about my funded futures and with them specifically, it's the end of day. So wherever your account is by the end of that trading day is where your drawdown will be placed. Now your threshold gets moved up regardless, even if you have not actually closed out of your position. So we have an example here. Your starting balance is 50K. Your threshold is $47,500, $2,500 below the 50K. You make $500 and close the trade. Your balance will be $50,500 and your threshold will be at $48,000. So number three says next, you enter a trade and get up to $52,000 and don't close the trade until your balance is at $51,000. So basically you went $2,000 into profit 
but you end up closing this price pool back on you and close out your position at 51k then your threshold will be 49,500 so as you guys can see here even though you end up closing out at 51,000 your account increased of unrealized profit up to 52,000 so your account is trailing behind that $2,500 is trailing behind that so from the highest value of 2000 would get us that 49500 hope that's making sense let me know in the comments if you guys need me to clarify so it says here as you can see the drawdown threshold liquidation is not based on when you can close the trade it is based on the highest balance of when you are in the trade so this is very important for us to take in when we see profit we have to take profit especially on a futures funded account that has a trailing drawdown of unrealized profit so this goes just more into more examples of how that works here and i specifically have trade of eight so it said each evaluation and the pa account so it doesn't matter for both the evaluation and the pa account they both are the same has the 50k trailing threshold of 2500 so they give just another example let's say on the first day with the max of 50k and a low of forty seven thousand five hundred dollars you place your trade and the active trade is in profit six hundred dollars your max drawdown always trails the peak in real time so the max drawdown is forty eight thousand one hundred however you have not closed the trade and by the time you close the trade the profit is only a hundred dollars now your trailing drawdown is still at 48 100 from when you were in profit six hundred dollars so i highly recommend before you end up purchasing one of these accounts can your strategy that you currently trade actually fit in these type of rules of trailing your threshold i personally am a intraday slash swing trader so i know i have to develop my strategy around how i trade these accounts even how i've had to trade over into the futures accounts from how i trade forex has already been different so you have to really consider this back test this before you guys purchase your account and spend your money can you tweak your system or how will your system operate under these conditions of having to trail your drawdown in real time of unrealized profit let's go back to the faq all right so evaluation account rules account balance must close at or above the profit goal without hitting the max drawdown list it with the account type you choose make sure you fully understand the trailing drawdown we already went over that you have to trade for a minimum of seven days on the account they do not need to be consecutive follow the code of conduct be professional to review the conduct code we can go here do not let someone else trade your account. Do not share your username or password. Number five says to always have our trader and trade of eight open to monitor max drawdown and as a backup close trades. It says once you pass your evaluation, there's nothing for you to do. Do not cancel the evaluation. Accounts have passed, stop trading. So if your balance goes below the profit goal, the account will no longer be passed. So as soon as you pass that account, guys, you know, definitely close out of that trade. Um, basic rules here and guidelines. Holding through the close is not permitted. All trades must be closed and pending orders must be canceled before 4.59 p.m. EST. So basically, you can trade into New York close. We know we have to close before the end of the day when trading futures. It goes on to say the rule change does not affect the markets requiring an earlier close. Traders need to still manually cancel the trades on their end. Note, you must close earlier if the day is a holiday that closes early or if the market closes early than normal. This is the main things that we were kind of talking about, especially when considering how your strategy fits around trading futures. Are you a trader that likes to hold from New York into Asia, potentially Asia into London? You have to see how this kind of sets you up here as well because you have to be out of your account by 4.59 p.m. EST or they will automatically close any trade or pending orders. And just so you guys know, if you end up failing an account and the account is not reset within eight days, the user doesn't have any other active subscriptions. Rhythmic will disable the account. Trading your SIM account is no longer possible. You must reset the account within eight days or sign up for a new account. So basically, if you got in on a great deal, guys, and you don't want to end up having to purchase a whole nother account, you just want to pay for the reset fee, which may be cheaper than the account that you may potentially have, or you may have a free reset. Make sure that if you guys fail to reset that within eight days here, just wanted to highlight that. All right, last but not least, we have to go over the consistency rules for the PA and funded accounts. Now keep in mind guys, the evaluations do not have a consistency rule. The evaluation is to test the ability 
generate profit goals, to see how a trader can handle a simple evaluation for a handful of days, and how to beat a trailing drawdown. That is the test. Can you simply take a few minutes to figure out how to adjust your trading and handle the curveball? Because markets will throw you curveballs all day without a heads up is what they said here. Just to say that basically guys, um, with the evaluation accounts, you don't have to worry about certain consistency rules. But once we actually go into the PA account or actually get funded, what we need to know is about the consistency rules. And I wanna make sure that you guys know and completely understand this. So they go on to say, however, PA and live accounts have consistency rules as explained below. You will understand the consistency rules by reading the Apex Trader funding wants and doesn't want for PA live funded accounts. Apex doesn't want gamblers, lucky traders, windfall traders, scammer, erratic traders. Apex doesn't want traders who work the system, defraud the system, put ATF at risk, trade without a risk management system, uh, lack of good risk management, jump from strategy to strategy, lack any direction, think this is a way to get rich quick. So same thing as far as the other firms out there, they don't want traders who's basically trying to game the market, trading directly before news, trying to game the system, scammers. It's, it goes without saying what exactly goes into these but they do actually give examples that we'll jump into now it says that apex wants traders with a system that is set disciplined and consistent comprises an exact set of rules for entries initial stops take profits trailing methods and exits apex wants traders who are consistent with their trading system size days traded using good risk management so also traders that's not jumping around from using two contracts one day to 10 contracts the other day something that's very important here with Apex and it's something that they are monitoring. So if your system is around just straight over leveraging and trying to game the system or try to use the whole drawdown for that one trade in order to get that payout, you're probably gonna end up getting denied if they catch on to it from what they're saying that they're actually monitoring. So they're going to say it's about growing your account that exemplifies with dis discipline and consistent strategy that is ongoing day to day. Trader funding and pay performance is designed to be a long-term relationship. So what's important to notate is under their risk management, stop loss, profit targets, and trailing. Basically to summarize what they're saying here is they want traders that are not looking to just buy a whole bunch of accounts, end up blowing the account, having multiple discounted accounts for backup, and then eval accounts to use to abuse the cycle through for Full stop loss in attempt to gain is a prohibited strategy and will not result in funding payouts, but in forfeit. So they do start to give examples here. They say every true system or strategy that has a set amount as an initial stop loss upon entry, especially scalping strategies. For example, going for a 10 tick scalp profit target, having an initial stop of 30 ticks. So risking 30 ticks in order to make 10 or shooting for 20 ticks in profit with a stop loss of 60. In this scenario, risking three times the amount of profit you are targeting. So most of us, especially if you're in TGFX or watching this channel, I would hope that you're not risking a negative risk to reward going for a bigger stop loss of let's say 60 ticks just to make 20 ticks. I understand in the case or scenario, your initial risk was 60. Maybe you were trying to go for 60, going for that one to one and you end up closing at 26, that's a difference. But if your stop loss is always negative for what you gain to make, this is what they're actually talking about. And what they're going to say is actually trying to risk three to four times of what you always look to gain. So not because of the trading circumstance as being in profit and just end up closing that, you were you know, going for an extended target that was 60 to 60 ticks or you know, maybe a one to two, whatever the case may be. This is talking about actually having a three to four times risk opposed to what you were already predetermined to close at. So it says with trending or longer term strategies, this exact target is not always known. The market could go 10 ticks or 10 points. This is where it's important to have an initial stop loss, the initial amount you're willing to risk in order to see the potential gain you can make. It is always recommended to try your stops, exit points as the market goes in your favor and riding a big trend. Sure, give room for your profits to run, but make sure to move stops to not give it all back. Protect some of the profits and take some off the table. Do not give it back. This is good risk management. We talked about this in the My Fund and Futures video, talking about the 150K challenge that I passed using the alpha risk management plan. 
And we talked a little bit about how it's very important for these future firms to move our stop loss in to break even once we see that profit. Now, tweaking that plan just a little bit for Apex, we actually need to move our stop loss in as soon as we really start getting into profit. Now, how much that is when it comes to your specific plan and strategy is up to you. We'll dive into that in later videos when I actually pass my Apex Trader funded account but that's something you really have to think about and something that they're actually monitoring if you're placing those bigger stop losses to just make a very small gain. So it says risk to reward ratios between three to four times the amount of potential target profits are acceptable to apex without flags. Slight overages will be reviewed and acceptable based on consistency, history, no existence, prohibited activity or account cycling. Example, if you are targeting $100 in profit, do not risk more than three to 400 as your initial stop loss. So it's basically still saying you can. Once it's more than three to four times, then that's when they're gonna definitely start looking into it. And something that you have to understand, this whole future system or futures funding system is really about the take your profit when you get it and when you see it. And just from what I'm seeing, guys, it's a lot better for more of a scalping market. So you have to see with whatever strategy that you're trading, if you can capitalize on this type of system here. And it's what I had to highlight because I know a lot of you guys see traders online talking about different firms that they pass and you just go straight in and buy the challenge. You don't really look at this or review it. But that's what I'm here for to show you guys and also, you know, be alongside of you guys taking these accounts as well and showing you guys how I actually pass the challenges and so forth and so on. So wrapping up this video, guys, it goes on to say the prohibited is non-existence of risk management rules. No stop loss or exit plans in place are planned. Going for very small ticks in profit, but using large stop losses for the entire Apex account as a stop loss. This is not trading. This is gambling. And they give another example here. So five tick profit target, 450 tick stop loss, which is crazy, right? So the last thing before we end this video, guys, they do have an interesting rule that you have to be careful about when scaling or adding into trades or what they call dollar cost averaging. So to save you the hassle from reading all this, they don't have a issue with you actually scaling into and adding positions onto your trade. But as you can see here, they said there is a difference in adding in additional size versus going all in at once for a windfall attempt with no strategy. Entering according to a rule being right in the directional bias, seeing opportunity or signal for additional entries for a continued market and to be able to add to that an attempt to ride the market and let your profits run in line with the strategy. There's a plan, a reason, a directional bias that was correct. Your system entry was accurate in direction. So you add it in when the accurate direction was determined. This is an accepted action in the Apex PA account. So this is good. What they just explained here is good. So let's say you're in a trade in profit and you're looking to add into that position. There's nothing wrong with you doing that. Now, this is going to go into what they consider gambling, which would be the dollar cost averaging for this contract is defined as the practice of entering a trade with a directional bias or no bias, just entering to gamble and the market goes against you in the other direction. But continuing to enter in more and more orders multiple times in the direction of the original order, even while the market continues and continues to go the opposing way. No, this is the opposite of the example above scaling into winning trades and adding more when you were right versus adding in more and more when you were wrong in hopes of a turnaround and the makeup losses from the initial entry being in the wrong direction are two different scenarios, two very different scenarios. So just to highlight that, guys, that's basically they're saying here. If we're in a position, price is going in our direction, we're adding to that position, that's perfectly fine. They will not flag our account, end up taking away our PA or live account because of that. Just wanna highlight for you guys that I said, for this example, you enter along, the market immediately moves 10 to 20 tick shorts against you. Your open PL is negative and showing an unrealized loss currently. The market could continue down against you or it could simply have pulled down for a moment and may turn back in your favor. You do not know. So every blank ticks, it goes against you or every time you hit a certain level, it goes against you. You continue to add more and more into a losing position. 
This trading practice is prohibited in the Apex account. So it said that it's prohibited here. So it actually goes on to say what is permitted and accepted. So Apex will allow traders to enter one additional entry only in an open position that is currently has a negative PL. So this actually tells us here, guys, we can only enter in one position while your account is in the negative. So you basically can only add into a positive position. You can add in one additional entry. So that doesn't say specifically how many contracts, but you can add in one additional entry as price is going back against you here. So with that being said, I want you all to let me know in the comments, will you guys be giving Apex out a try? They always have deals going on up to 90 to 80%, which makes it attractive, but some of the rules are something that we definitely have to consider and I'm glad I got to actually showcase them for you guys. So put in the comments as well if there is more videos that you guys would like to see from me on specifically Apex or Futures accounts. Next, we'll be looking at Top Step. And then as always, I will be covering the trades that I'm taking on the account. Once I pass the accounts, going further into detail on the risk management trades that I'm taking. So you guys can always benefit from the education around both Forex and Futures trading from the TGFX channel. If you guys are interested in trading with this firm, go ahead and click the link in the description so you can get the latest coupon that Apex currently has. And as always, invest in yourself and I'll see you guys in the next video.